Hello, hello, it is Ryder, and today I am here to share with you another prophetic word. Um, and before I get into it, before I even share the title, I'm going to say right now, please be sure to test the spirit behind any of these kinds of videos that you find online. You know, before you even go and like look this stuff up or click on a video, ask the Lord, is this for me? Is this message meant for me at this time in my life? And if he says no, then please like click off of this video. Don't watch it. I will not be hurt. I will not be offended in any way, shape, or form. In fact, it would make me very happy to know that you are being obedient to the Lord because it is more important to be obedient to him than to please people. It would be better to not listen to this message than, you know, if it's not for you, than to listen to a message that isn't meant for you or that is meant for you but not at this point in your life and then you wind up going down a wrong path or you go down the right path but it's too early and everything blows up in your face. I would rather you be obedient and not have that happen to you. So with that being said, let's get into the message. And the title of this message is called I See Everything. I See Everything. So this is concerning a vision that the Lord showed me on the night of September 23rd, 2023. And I wrote down the bullet points for it on September 23rd, 2023, and the interpretation of it that the Lord just gave me today on the afternoon of September 24th, 2023. So starting things off, um, so what I saw in the vision at first, it wasn't like any vision the Lord had showed me before. I just saw a bunch of like green and blue dots and they didn't have any like clear form or pattern that they were making. They didn't move in any specific like way. It was just that they moved about in a chaotic way. There was no clear form, no clear sense about it. Then the green and blue dots formed into the land and sea. Um, so they were separated. They made clear patterns and structures. Then God showed me towns and settlements on the land and everything on the land was yellow and green but mostly yellow with like a greenish hue in some spots and he zoomed in on the landscape because all I could see was just that but then he would zoom in on certain parts of the landscape and he would show me these like individual buildings individual structures and laboratories and things that were happening and then um, on one of the things that God zoomed into, I saw people building these like giant weapons like lasers and missiles and stuff. And they were using computers and stuff to operate them. Um, and I put in parentheses, God revealed this is symbolic of like people going on military conquests, like modern day military conquests. And then I saw that a missile was shot at the earth but it was deflected by some kind of, like, force field, and nothing happened to the Earth. Then, um, the whole scene just plunged into darkness. Like, everything I saw was black, and that's all I could see was the color black, and these, like, thin blue lines that were creating odd shapes in the darkness. And I'll get into this in a little bit, but I realize what that was showing me is, like, the darkness is its own thing, but just seeing the thin blue lines, it reminds me of those flags that people use um, to show their support of the police. It's like an American flag if you see that here in the States and there's just like one blue line in the middle. Um, and in parentheses, God told me um, he wanted to talk about police brutality. Then, um, after that, I saw an angel, and it was it looked like one of the ones that Ezekiel saw in the Bible. Um, it was one of the ones that looked like a wheel intersecting a wheel. It had a large eye in the middle, and it was covered in eyes and made of light. And um, it was staring at the earth, like, from space, like, you know, like, like, the earth is here, the angel's here, and it's just, like, staring at the earth. And it looked like it was ready to bring judgment upon the earth. And then the vision ended. So...
what I'm going to say right now is like the beginning of it with like all the green and blue dots. Um, they didn't have a clear form, but then they turn into the land and the sea. What God told me is that he's talking about how he formed the earth and all that is in it, and it was good. And this brings us back to the creation story, how God made the earth in six days and rested on the seventh day. You know, he made, like, the land, the sea, the stars, the moon, the sun. He made, like, you know, all the, like, animals and plants and stuff, and he made us. And everything was good. Um, but then God showed me, you know, the people making, like, all the missiles and you know, all of that, and what this reveals is, you know, God was saying that because of the violence that is in our hearts, and this includes hatred that we have for one another as humans, because Jesus said that, you know, if we hate someone that is as good as murdering them in our heart, the same with adultery, if you just look at a man or a woman with lust, you've already committed adultery in your heart. You know, so it's not just not doing the things, it's also you think about these things, and that's also a sin. So it's a sin to hate people. So because of the violence that is in our hearts, you know, whether it's like war that we're going on, like police brutality, military conquests, con conquests, like because of this violence that is in our hearts, the hatred that we have for one another, we have brought death destruction and sin into the world just like when adam and eve ate the forbidden fruit the one thing god told them to they invited sin into the world they fell they were not allowed into the garden of eden anymore and because of that we live in a fallen world you know um and just like with that you know we to this day bring death destruction and sin into the world with our actions with the violence in our hearts with the hatred that we have for one another when we should be showing each other love and raising up one another we're tearing each other down and that is responsible for a lot of the darkness that is in this world today it is because of our own sins our own violence our own shortcomings and failure to do what is just and right in the eyes of god However, the things that we're doing, you know, like, I, I, I don't watch the news anymore for the sake of my own mental health, but I know that there's all these, like, wars going on, like, people are talking about, like, missiles and nuclear wars and all this stuff, and, you know, like, I saw those missiles and stuff being ready, but in the vision, one of them was going at the Earth, but the Earth deflected it with some invisible force field, like... The thing that we need to remember is that nuclear war, like, you know, World War Three, like, whatever people are talking about, that's not going to be how the world ends, because that's not what the Bible says, and the Bible is the word of God, and God does not lie. So that is not going to be how the world ends. God has already told us how the end of the world and the creation of the new world would happen in the book of Revelation. So the things that we do, like, you know, they're, they're awful things, but that's not going to bring about the destruction of this world. That'll happen when God pours out his wrath during the Great Tribulation. And if you have been born again, you have nothing to worry about, because even if, like, the rapture were to happen tonight, if you've been saved, God will take you up with him in the clouds. You'll be up in the clouds with Jesus being taken to heaven, and you don't got to worry about anything that comes after that. Because you've been saved, you're already in heaven. So the most important thing right now is to lead a righteous life as if the second coming of Jesus is happening today, this very hour, this very minute. We need to always be on guard and we need to always be prepared because we don't know the day or the hour. And then at the end of the vision, I saw, like, one of, one of God's angels, and it was looking at the earth, like, prepared to, like, you know, bring judgment upon the earth. And we do not know the day or the hour, but the Lord is prepared to judge the whole world. And we need to be on guard and live as if the second coming of Jesus is coming this very minute, this very hour, this very day. So if you have not been saved... 
the most important thing that you need to do right now is to repent of your sins. And what that means is you ask God for forgiveness. You come to him with a broken and contrite spirit. You ask him to forgive you of your sins and you do everything in your power to turn away from sins. God may ask you to quit the smoking, quit the drinking, quit sleeping around, whatever it is that you've been doing that you know deep down inside of you you shouldn't be doing. Give it up. And if you have a hard time leaving these sins in the past, ask God for the strength and the wisdom and the guidance to leave these people, places, and things in the past that no longer serve you so that you can lead a, light, uh, lead a righteous life in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. So outside of repentance, the other thing, the second thing that you need to be do that you need to do to be saved is put your trust in Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. When he died on the cross, he paid the price for all of our sins. And that includes your sins and my sins. So if you have ever lied, you've ever stolen anything, you've ever used the Lord's name in vain, you anything like that, that is a sin. We're all sinners. The only person who ever walked this earth and did not sin sin was Jesus. And he died on the cross. He shed his blood on the cross to pay the price for all of our sins. So whoever repents of their sins and puts their trust in Jesus will be saved and will be able to have everlasting life with the Father in heaven. So with that being said, the scripture passage that I want to share with you today is from Matthew chapter 25 verses 1 through 13. Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. And this is talking about the parable of the ten virgins. And I'm going to read this to you right now. And it talks about, you know, how we always need to be on guard and we always need to be prepared for the second coming of Jesus. And that's why it's important. You can't put off salvation for tomorrow. If you feel this in your heart, if you know that this is what you need to be doing, then like you need to repent and put your, your trust in Jesus today because we don't know the day or the hour that's going to happen when Jesus returns. So with that being said, Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13, the parable of the ten virgins. And I'm going to read this for you. At that time, the kingdom of heaven, and this, this is Jesus talking. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom! Come out to meet him! Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with them to the wedding banquet, and the doors were shut. Later the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. And I feel like, and this talks about, you know, like preparing for Jesus. The people that didn't have the oil in their lamps ready to go when the groom arrived. Like, no, when was it the groom? The bridegroom. Yeah, when the bridegroom, like they were waiting, they didn't have the oil in their lamps. They weren't ready. They were not ready for the return of Jesus. So then they went to go out, out to buy oil. And by the time they came, the master came. And the banquet already started, the doors were closed, and they couldn't get in. It was just like, bye, you should have been ready, you needed to be on guard. But the ones that had oil in their lamps that were ready to go, they got to go in the banquet and be with the Lord. And this is a metaphor for being with the Lord in heaven. So that's why it's important to always stay on guard because we do not know the day or the hour when Jesus is going to return. We do not know when the rapture is going to happen. We do not know when the great tribulation is going to happen. Only the Father knows that. So with all that being said, I think now more important than ever, it is important to repent and put your trust in Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. 
you know, God knows everything and he sees everything. And one other thing that I'm going to say, and I probably should have said it earlier, but it was more important I read the scripture, is that, you know, if anyone has hatred for other people in their hearts, we need to do what we can to extinguish that hatred in our hearts, to show love, to show kindness and patience for one another, to hold our tongues when it is prudent so that we're not lashing out at each other because the power of life and death is in the tongue. And if you have a hard time showing love and kindness for others, if you're harboring hatred for other people in your hearts, ask God to help you with that, to help you have a larger capacity of love and kindness to show to those who you dislike, who hurt you, um, anything like that. Because we shouldn't be walking around with hatred in our hearts. That's only going to hurt us in the long run, and that's not how God wants us to live. Um, also, if you have been violent towards other people, I know that God does not want you to do that. Um, if you, God is telling me to say it, if you are engaged in war, in the military, things like that, um, you may need to step away from that. I would say ask the Lord for that, but I do believe that the Lord is telling you to walk away from that, walk away from the violence and the oppression that is caused by war in this country and the same goes for police brutality it is important that we have military because they keep us safe it's important that we have police because they keep our community safe but if you are in a position of authority and you are abusing that authority to take advantage of people that are oppressed that are poor that are in need if you're like needless like like needlessly just beating people harassing people god does not want you to do that that is not how god calls us to live yes you need to do your job and you need to keep people safe but god doesn't want you to needlessly abuse and harass and bully other people and use your power you know and take advantage of it if you keep doing that god will take away what you have and give the power and the authority to someone that will actually use it wisely and prudently so with all that being said, you know, we need to quench the hatred that we have in our own hearts and replace it with love for one another. And we need to stop this needless violence, whether it's war, whether it's brutality, even if it's parents just, you know, brutalizing their own kids, kids being disobedient to our, their parents. We need to start showing each other more love and more kindness. There is so much hatred, so much anger out there in the world. And it's like, I go out, like even just taking the bus or going on a walk, like I see more and more people that are just so rude and nasty and venomous towards one another. And I don't know where in the world it is coming from, but now more than ever, we need to show each other kindness and love and not just like, oh, like being nice to people. I'm talking about showing people like unconditional love and kindness, the love that Jesus showed all of us when he paid the price, the price for all of our sins by dying on the cross that is the kind of love that we need to show for one another and right now at least where i live it is sadly lacking so if you are hearing this message right now i believe that you are being called to be different than the people of this world you are being called to be an ambassador of love you are being called to be an ambassador of the love that jesus christ showed for all of us in this world even just the little things that we do can make a big difference and brighten someone's day make their week make the world a slightly better and brighter place because as servants of the lord we are called to be the light and the salt of the earth with all that being said, thank you for taking the time to listen to this message. I hope that it was helpful, and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of the day. Alrighty, take care. Bye-bye.